All right, if my plans work the way I wanted to, it is Wednesday night. You have spent Monday and Tuesday doing flip videos and working in class with me, and you have become an expert on finding subjects and predicates in sentences and finding the simple subject and the simple predicate. So now it's time to take it one step further. As you know from the thought of the week, every sentence, every complete sentence, has a subject and a predicate. They have to. And, uh, because the English language, however, is somewhat complicated, the subjects sometimes like to hide. Don't think of it as something difficult. Think of it as a game of hide and go seek. There has to be a subject, so go find it. We made this foldable in class today. It is a four window pane foldable with our four uh, topics on it, questions, imperatives, inverted sentences, and here slash there. You should have that out with you. If you've read it at home, please take a minute and recreate it. All right, in some kind of sentences, subjects can come between verb parts, follow verb parts, or not appear at all. But there is always a subject, always. You just have to find it. Just like you have this cute little kitten hiding under the hat. Wouldn't it be fun to find the kitten? Of course it would. Just like it's fun to find the subject. Okay, yes, I know that's not really the same thing, but I'm trying. So if you look, under the hat hides the cat. This is an example of an inverted sentence, and cat is your subject. And isn't she cute? So we're going to start with questions, so open that flat, please. Across the top of that flat, please write that the rule of thumb when you see a question is to turn the question into a statement. Then you ask who or what it does. All you really have to write is turn the question into a statement. Let me show you what I mean. Did the ending surprise you? The ending did surprise you. So what did surprise you? The ending. So if you take it and you restate the question as a statement, the subject is much easier to find. Now, in most questions, the subject comes either after the verb phrase or verb or between the parts of a verb phrase. Let me show you what I mean. Is the story suspenseful? Well, your verb is is, and the subject story does come after the verb. And you know this because you change it into a statement. The story is suspenseful. Linking verb, is is a verb. Subject to story, verb is is. Now, that also works when you have it, well, with a verb phrase, what happens? because the verb here is did read, you'll notice that the subject comes in between the verb phrase. When did she read the book? Now you're going to restate this as a statement, but you can't finish the statement because you really don't know when she read the book, so you just kind of do the dot, dot, dot. She read the book yesterday, two days ago, a week ago, who knows, who cares? Because all you're looking for is the subject, which you now know is she. I would like you to write these two examples in your notes under questions. Pause the video while you do that. And then hit play again, and we will move on to imperatives. Oh, and I have my animation, but I'll take it off in case you're trying to copy. Imperatives, commands. Um, the subject is always hidden, and it's always you. So what you're going to write down, the subject of command is usually you. Now, I say usually, it really is always unless another subject is stated. So if you don't see a subject, the subject is you. Usually it's not in the sentence. See? I would look at you and say, turn down the lights. I wouldn't say, you turn down the lights. Just turn down the lights. But then your subject is you. Or I might say, sit perfectly still. Once again, the subject is you. Imperatives are the easiest. You just have to remember the subject of an imperative is you. So please write both of these examples down in your foldable. And that's it for imperatives. You're done with them. You can close that flap. And you can open inverted sentences. That's the one that's the hardest. Inverted sentences. First of all, they're the hardest, but thankfully, they're not that common. It, they sound kind of silly. Sometimes you use them to increase your sentence fluency. The subject comes after the verb. And a lot of times this happens when you start a sentence with a prepositional phrase, which we have not learned yet, but you will be learning soon. The usual order of the sentence is reversed. Oh, so you should have written the subject comes after the verb in your notes. So like a normal sentence would be a scratching sound came from the other side of the door. Normal, right? But sometimes someone wants to make it sound fancy and they say from the other side of the door came a scratching sound. So if you look, it's coming after the verb. The verb is came. What came? A, a scratching sound, sound being the most important word. Copy this example into your notes, please. You don't have to write the normal, just the inverted. Example two, a large black cat rushed into the room. You'd almost think it was Halloween, wouldn't you? The inverted version of that would be, into the room rushed a large black cat. Notice, there's your verb, and cat is your subject. It comes 
after the verb in an inverted sentence. Another way to think about it is into the room rushed a large black cat. Well, you know that rushed is your verb, and a room can't rush, so a room cannot be your subject. Got it? Just like here, a door cannot make a scratching sound, so you know that the door is not your subject. Write down uh, this inverted sentence into your notes as well, and then you can close your inverted sentence notes. And look, pretty cool, huh? That one was fun to do. All right, so we are on your last one. You are almost done. Can you believe it? Sentences that begin with here or there. First of all, here or there is almost never the subject. I want to say never, but then as soon as I do, I will find the one example where it is. In this case, what you would write down is the subject follows the verb. Look for the verb and ask who or what. For example, here comes the scariest part. What comes? The scariest part. Therefore, oops, part is your subject. There goes our flashlight. There goes what? Hmm, our flashlight. Therefore, flashlight is your subject. Here or there are almost never the subject. See them? All right, so this is what your finished foldable should look like. And if it doesn't, please pause it. I think I had, did one less example in one of them, which I shouldn't have. I think it was the inverted. Um, you will be bringing it into class tomorrow, and we will be practicing finding inverted, um, or excuse me, we will be practicing finding hidden subjects, which they might be a question, it might be a command, it might be an inversion, or it might be here or there. If you want to just try some extra practice for fun to try to use your notes, you can try these and see how you do. Thanks for listening, y'all, or as I say sometimes, thanks for staying and playing, and I will see you at class tomorrow.